I'm angry. I've always been angry since like since I was born. I think I've been angry about myself for no reason. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> hmm. I, I wonder when you talk about the anger. There's a couple of things you re- really resonate, right? I think um, when you talk about anger, you've been angry since you were born. Do you know? Do you have an idea where that comes from? Where the anger comes uh, from? Okay, the anger comes from the fact that I think um, when I was young, I used to be like, I don't know, but it felt like it was a form of um, lesson to teach me a lesson. So they kept comparing me to people. They're like, oh, see your, your brother, your brother is doing this. See your friend, your friend is doing this. You are, you are this, you are that. So it always made me super angry about myself. And like, I always had that feeling that I can't do that much. So I was so angry about myself. So it made me more like it made me uh, like an angry person is very bitter. I think so now like it makes me like to compare myself to other things, which is not so cool. Yeah. Welcome to Taking Off the Mask. My name is Ashanti Branch, and I'm really glad that you joined us. Uh, today's guest is Brimpong. Um, his nickname is Frizzle. I mean, if you follow him on Instagram, it's Frizzle Made It, and he is an amazing artist. He is a photographer. Um, he is the Adobe 2020 Rising Star in photography. Uh, just an amazing work that you will see him produce. But we're not going to talk much about all of that. We're going to talk a little bit about his creative process, um, but we are going to talk about mostly about these masks. You know, in this conversation, he talks about his journey from architecture school. And so when things started not going well and not going in the path he was um, looking for, he found himself sitting under a tree and an idea came to him. And through his work, through his words, you're going to hear some of his story. Um, He lives in Ghana. And it was such a pleasure to have a conversation with him. I look forward to uh, when I can go and visit him um, in Ghana and see more of his work and not only um, and see that part of the world. I hope you are doing well during this holiday season. If you have not yet had a chance to make a mask and you want to be a part of this movement, you can go to www.100kmasks.com www.100kmasks.com and create your mask anonymously. Uh, What you're going to see when you go into that site is a a new site coming in the beginning of 2021. So we're really excited about being able to share that with you and with the world. We hope that you will share it with someone as well. If you like what you hear today, please subscribe. Please share this podcast with someone, maybe a, a rising artist who doesn't necessarily believe in their art yet. Maybe you can encourage them and inspire them with the words of Frimpong. Thank you for being here. Have a good day. Welcome to the Taking Off the Mask podcast. I am excited to introduce you to uh, Frimpong. Um, And I wanna make sure I'm pronouncing it right because uh, what a beautiful name. Is it Frimpong? Yeah, it's Frimpong. Yeah, we're right on. Uh, Frimpong is going to um, introduce himself. I'm really glad to have you on the show. Uh, you're our first international guest, which I'm super excited about, you know. Um, and so why don't you start by just telling the guests um, who you are, tell us what you do, and, um, and we're going to jump into these masks, but I'm really excited to have you here. Okay. Um, I'm Nana Frimpong Odro, also known as Frizzo. Okay, I'm an artist in Ghana, and basically that's why I do this. Yeah. yeah. When you say an artist, like for those who, you know, I've seen your work, so I'm, I'm going to have to pretend like I haven't seen it so the people who haven't seen it can find it. Like, tell us the kind of art that you do. What kind of art do you do? Um, okay. what's, your, what's your medium of art? Okay, I'm a, like, I use, I do photography, but like I make it in a form of art. How, how did that start for you? How, how did you get into photography and art? How did, were you always an artist or did you 
find that as an adult? Like what, what would kick that off for you? Okay. I've always been an artist. Like I've always been an artist, uh, but I started photography when I deferred from school, like the college. So through that process, I think I was kind of sad and depressed and felt like I can't do anything. But once, what, once upon a time I was sitting under a tree and I just took a picture and then like it all, everything just started. So that's how come I started doing photography. Okay, this is getting exciting. The story is getting exciting. So you were, you were sitting under a tree. Yeah. Where, where were you? Where, do you remember where you were? You, do you remember the tree? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was in a hostel. Yeah. Where, where, where were you at the time? What city? Okay. Accra. I was uh-huh. in Accra. Yeah, so that's when everything started. Well, you know, these masks that we're going to talk about, I think, are a big, a big part of ourselves. But I guess uh, just understanding the backstory, you know, let me tell you how I've learned about your work. Um, I had seen an image. Someone had sent me an image of, uh, of a face <laughs> and on, on Instagram. And uh, I think the face had uh, Band-Aids on it, I think, bandages. And it was just like a really captivating photo. I think it was a black and white photo. And, um, and that's when I first started learning about your work. And I went back to some of the photos. And I was like, wow, look at this work. Look at this work. So when you were sitting under the tree, you took a photo. Yeah. And then yeah. can, you, can you just walk us through that story? Because I imagine it's maybe it's, I don't know if it's a long story or whatever, but can you just walk us through that it's first photo? Short. Oh, it's quite okay. short. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It started with me taking pictures of myself as like a self-portrait. So it was just me trying to express my feelings and how I feel in a picture. But also along with that, I was taking pictures like in streets and everything. But the most like pictures that I used to love doing was taking pictures of myself in a sense of expressing my own self with my picture. So it was mostly self-portrait. So my first picture was myself. Yeah. Is that one of the pictures you posted or is that one of just your original arts? I, I, I posted them, but I think I archived them later. <laughs> so then you said you were under the tree. You were having some feelings going on um, about yeah. university. Did you say you had just finished university or you were just taking a break from university? I took a break. Okay. Yeah. Was there, were there other things happening in your life that, that uh, caused the break? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think when I was going to school, I think everything was all well and so cool at my family side. So I was, I was deterred to enter college. My sisters and everything were, were done with college. So I, was, I was deterred. So in my level 300 as an architecture student, I think I had to defer because of like financial situation. So I had to just sacrifice for my mom so that she just takes a break because she's the only one that like struggles and takes care of us. Yeah. So I was like, like, I just want to defer so that you, you have some space and be free and not stress over me that much. But I believe that everything is going to be okay. So through that process, I was like, I was all alone in school. I didn't want to go home. I just wanted to have some time for myself. So, so that was when everything started. So finding this, like, part of me, like, it's like a reward through, like, that, that situation. So I felt like that whatever happened to me was, was a gift. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So you're in, in a hostel because that, that's basically the dorms for college, right? And yeah, yeah. That's, that's it was a private. It was a private hostel. Okay, right on. And then you're like, okay, I got to take a break from school. I, I really want to achieve this career. You're an architecture student, you said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you started taking these pictures like to express yourself in that way. Yeah. And then, but it was, was, it was after, it was after I deferred. I I wasn't taking pictures when I was in school. But after I deferred, I was always, I was always like, I think the part of me that was like in isolation was what brought that fire in me out because I didn't know that I could do this, but like sitting under the tree, thinking of how to express my, my ass. Yeah. Apart from using architecture, I think that was when that part of me was born. 
to be able to express myself more because all along I was just thinking the architecture is the only way I could express my art. Yeah. Nice. Do you know, thinking about the expressions that you put in these images you create, is yeah. it still the expressions that are coming through you? Is it like what you express in your art? Like I see art, I mean, I, I don't know what the, I, I, you have a meaning what they mean, but when I watch, when I look at them, I, I think each person makes up their own meaning for them. Yeah. Like when yeah. you see that picture um, of like the top half of the body, the bottom half of the body grabbing the top half or just like all the, it's like, Oh man, that's it. How, how does each person internalize the messages? You know, are they still messages that are coming from you or are you getting inspired from things outside of you? Um, my messages are now coming from me and from outside of me, but I think it's mostly from me. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Well, you know, we talked about these masks because it's a really a, an expression of ourselves, right? Like the mask yeah. that we talk about in our work is around what are the parts of ourselves that we gladly let people see? And then what are the things behind the mask that we often don't let people see, you know? And I think that uh, this experience that you were going to do, I mean, you're an artist already. I, I, I'm not an artist, I don't think, but, and I didn't start this as an art activity. I started it as a, a way of helping people connect. And how, before we, before we talk about the mask, how was that experience for you? You know, normally that you're normally a photographer. How was the experience of creating the mask? Uh, I think it was just a way for me to know myself more. <laughs> yeah. It was, right it's, it's, it's actually great. Right on. Right on. Well, I'm excited to, to talk about the mask with you, you know. So what, the way we do it, for those of you that have, have not made a mask, you can go to 100kmasks.com and create your own mask. Uh, they're anonymous. I um, mean, it's an opportunity for you to share and, and express what's going on behind the mask that you constantly maybe feel you have to wear. So uh, Frimpong and I are going to, Frizzle, is that your artist name? Frizzle is your artist name? Yeah. No, I, it was a nickname from junior high school. Okay, right on. So calling you Frimpong is okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. perfect. Um, so what Frimpong and I are going to do, we're going to, uh, talk about our mask. So uh, we always let the guests decide how we want to do this. So do you want to go first um, and share your mask or do you want me to go first? Uh, we always give the guests the option. Go first. I'll go first. Okay. So what I'll do is um, I'll share the front and then I will uh, share the back. Okay. So the front of the mask, um, I'll show them front first and then I'll have you share your front and then I'll share the back and then you can share the back, okay? So for those okay. who are like trying to figure out what the mask is, the front of the mask is a one picture and it's uh, the things about ourselves that we gladly let the world see, okay? So that's the front. Mm -hmm. And then the back are the things that we normally don't let the world see. And so uh, my front looks like this. This is the mask I drew today. Um, and it says, my, my, my messy writing, it says funny, serious, and hardworking. Uh, those are the, the qualities that I gladly show uh, the world. Um, I think uh, when I think about funny and serious, like those are kind of sometimes in conflict because I just want to laugh about stuff, but like I'm super serious. So I'm trying to like have a balance between keeping things light, but also like getting stuff done. So uh, the funny and serious and um, hardworking is kind of like, you know, right now it's Saturday. Like, you know, a lot of my friends, you know, a lot of, a lot of my you know, nonprofit leader friends are like, you gotta take your weekends and rest. You gotta rest. And um, part of me is like, we gotta get stuff done. We gotta get stuff done. So I'm trying to have a balance, but uh, sometimes the hardworking part of me is the one that's uh that's leading. So yeah. the 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 what we're gonna do now is we're um I have the friend Pong share the front of his mask. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. He says talented, happy. Hardworking and friendly. Nice, nice. Is there anything you want to say about any of those words that are that ring ring oh, that are ringing for you? I think. Let me say, um, strong. I think I mostly like to appear very strong, so that like nobody gets to bully me or makes me feel like I can't do anything. Yeah. Nice. 
Well, here's the back now. And the back is, as we talked about, the back is very different than the front. The back is the things that we normally don't talk about, that we normally uh, don't um, acknowledge. Um, yeah, so here we go. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna write something different on the back of mine this time, um, but here are the ones that came up for me on the back. So, fear, sad, and trauma. And um, normally, I write fear of failure. And uh, I was with a mentor the other day, and he was like, "Are you? Are you? You know? Are you? Is it really fear of failure, or are you afraid of success?" Some, something like that he said that's how I felt it and I'm like why would I be afraid of success <laughs> don't, don't you don't want success and then the question kind of keeps deepening around man what if I'm amazingly successful like what if I'm afraid of that which seems like doesn't seem intuitive it doesn't seem like why would anybody be afraid of success well there's pressure from, from success as well as there is for failure right there's 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 pressure there's pressure yeah. not achieving your goals and when you achieve them then you got to feel the pressure of keeping it going and then what's the next big thing and what's the next big piece and what's the next big event you can put on and what's the next big movement you're going to create and i think having to think about that wonders is it which fear is it most dominating is it a fear of failure that i'm dominating me or is it a fear of success so that's one that I have kind of altered a lot. I'm sad. I put sad or sadness. Um, yeah, I think uh, just the world today, you know, sometimes it just feels like why, why are, why are people so hateful? Like, I mean, it's been going on for years, right? For years and years. And amazing that we're talking to you about uh, from Ghana, right? Like where the reason I ended up here in, in the United States was because people went to where you were and stole humans and brought them over here to work and then treat people. And once we become free, then they still treat us badly. It's kind of like, so I have a lot of sadness that I sometimes don't talk about and definitely rarely talk about my sadness deeply connected to you know, to Africa and, and, and the roots of, 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 of life for us. And um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to talk about that, but that, that came up for me right now. And um, yeah, I'll stop there for now. How about you? What's on the back of your mask? Okay. It says angry, lazy, doubtful. Um, I like being alone, funny and sarcastic. Mm. Yeah. And those are the ones that you don't show much. Exactly. Yeah. You want to talk about any of those? Okay. Uh, let me start with lazy. Okay. I feel like I'm, I'm super lazy. I feel like I don't do much. Like, mostly, I just like to be there and do nothing just with my phone. And I just do little of like creating. That's so it makes me feel like I'm super lazy. Like I don't like to. I don't know if it's because like I am whatever I'm doing doesn't feel like work to me. It just feels like something normal. So mostly I feel like I'm very lazy. And I'm very doubtful about myself. When I create an art piece, I always feel like it's not like that great. Because I like to compare my old works to my new like my new ones. And I'm like, no, nah, this should be better than this. So it makes me always keep doubting. I need to I need to do better. I need to do better. And worried. I'm very worried about like what is ahead of me. Because um like I always think about the future. And it makes me feel like what is going to happen? What's next? Like how is this going to happen? And it's just the keep the future just keeps surprising me every time. And I think I'm one of the funniest people you can ever be with. But <laughs> but I don't like to show it. I don't like to show it that much because I think people like to ride on that. And when you are always being like 
funny, laughing, people respect you very less. They feel like it, they make a fool out of you, right? I don't like to show it to people that much, just few people. And I'm angry. I've always been angry since like since I was born. I think I've been angry about myself for no reason. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> hmm. I wonder when you talk about the anger, there's a couple of things you really resonate, right? I think um, when you talk about anger, you've been angry since you were born. Do you know, do you have an idea where that comes from? Where the anger comes from? Okay, the anger comes from the fact that I think um, when I was young, I used to be like, I don't know, but it felt like it was a form of um, lesson to teach me a lesson. So they kept comparing me to people. They're yeah, like, oh, see your, your brother, your brother is doing this. See your friend, your friend is doing this. You are, you are this, you are that. So it always made me super angry about myself. And like, I always had that feeling that I can't do that much. So I was so angry about myself. So it made me more, like it made me uh, like an angry person and very bitter. I think so now, like it makes me like to compare myself to other things, which is not so cool, yeah. Yeah. You know, we talked about comparing like your old art to your new art and yeah. like putting out a piece. I think uh, I, I really resonated with that. I think for me, I I was telling <laughs> one of my interns the other day, I think in my phone, I probably have about, let's say at least 100. It's probably more, but at least 100 times that I have like recorded myself saying something, blah, 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 blah. Like in the moment, I thought it was really good. And then later when I was going to go post it, I'm like, ah, uh, nah, that, that doesn't sound right. Or, uh, I think they're going to, you know, somebody's going to judge me. And, and so then I'm like, ah, I just won't post it. Like, eh, it doesn't hurt nobody. It doesn't, you know, it isn't like in my mind when I was recording it, it was for a purpose. I overthought it. I, and then I was like, ah, that doesn't sound right. I think, I think I pronounced that word wrong or whatever it is. It could be anything. It could be the background. Oh, what was that person behind me in the video? Like whatever. And so that overthinking it and judging, self-judging, you know, self-judging. And uh, I, I really, I really resonate with that a lot. And thank you. So thank you for sharing that. I think as a, and you're an artist, right? So I imagine as an, I'm not an artist. So I keep saying that I'm working on like that idea that I'm not an artist as a, as an old message that was told me when I was little, like, like when I would draw something and the teacher can grade your work and they're like this is ugly right but this is not good work and then you you could self you became self-critical right like self-critical yeah. as a and i think i've had to like break free from that like one of my buddy calls it the um the inner critic you have to like take the inner critic <laughs> every time we do an activity with him his name is um adam uh he says okay find that find that part where that where you feel some stress some tension and he's like grab it just grab it and pull it out right this is the inner yeah. critic right now right and just throw it out he says when you leave here you can pick it back up but while we do this activity together just throw out the inner critic and i think so many people i know for me i, I say it for many people but i imagine other people do the same right like we probably judge ourselves way harder than anybody else judges us you know yeah so you know and thank you for speaking to that as a as an artist who has, who has amazing work, right? Like, you know, when I see your work, I'm just like, that's amazing, right? Like just the ideas and the creativity and the, I mean, just the beauty of it. So uh, thank you for, for sharing that. Yeah. Are there any, like, like for the young people in your community, for the young people in Accra, Accra, right? Yeah. For the young people that you meet or that you that see your work, do you ever feel like they are looking for permission to like dive into what they're excited about? I mean, I think that like yeah. like I mean, you were going to be an architect, and now you're an artist. Like, do people put pressure on you to like why, why don't you do the other thing? Like, do you get? I think it's like that side of people who pressure each other, you know? Yeah, but I think um, for me. I'm super lucky to have a mother who like super supports me no matter what. So that's what makes me do whatever I'm doing. She's she's always calling me that, 
hey, won't you draw something? You have to come up with ideas. You have to be drawing every day so that new ideas keep coming. So she's like my biggest motivator. I don't, I don't think there's anybody that can tell me anything apart from her. Nice. That's that's good. Did you do you experience that with friends of yours or when you were younger, where other friends, where their parents said, "Just do your best," like, or yeah. did you feel? No, no. What but my you, friends are. My friends are always like you are. You are the luckiest guy because your mother always your mother supports anything you're doing. But us, our mother is like you have to do this. You have to go here. You have to do this. And I'm not getting that. And I'm always like, yeah, I just got the best mom. <laughs> awesome! Shout out to your mom. What's your mom's name? Can you tell us your mom's name? Okay, she's Lucas Myers. One more time. Lucas Myers. Lucas Myers. Yeah. Right on. Well, thank you, Lucas Mayas, for for inspiring from Pong to like follow his art, um, the amazing work. So, what what are some of your what are your some of your next goals in your artwork? Like, what is your do you have? I know you said you feel like sometimes you're lazy, but do you? Are, is it that you feel like you're lazy from other things, or because you feel that art is not work? Is that is that what you? Would... No, I just feel like I'm I'm lazy from other things. I feel like whatever I'm doing is not work to me. Okay, that's how it, it feels like. I think when you're doing something you love so much, it doesn't become work to you. So when you're just there, it feels like you're being a lazy person. But yeah, someone else there will think, yeah, okay, this guy is a hardworking guy. But you feel like you're being lazy. Yeah. <clears throat> right on. So what, what's the next steps? What, what, what's next in your work? Like what is, um, what other, other projects are you working on? Um, what are some things that you're you're doing in, to like continue moving yourself forward? Okay, I just I keep drawing mostly, and I keep reading often. But I also have this kind of dream, like a future dream of like get giving people the opportunity to be able to also like express their gifts. So like I would like so like get on form of like an art school or a talent school to help people actually bring themselves out like as artists instead of following the normal trend of like going to school, which mostly I think it drowns people's gifts and it doesn't allow them to express themselves in this world. So I just want to give people the opportunity to do, to do same. So, and, and is that going to be working with like adults, with youth, with like schools? Do you have a vision on how that will look? Yeah, I think I'm just going to own my stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, like I'm just going to own my stuff and just help people. Yeah. So when you say you draw, like you don't post your drawings, do you? <laughs> you only post photography. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The drawing, the drawing is. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. The drawing, the drawing, the drawing leads to um the photography. So when I get an idea, I just write it down. Okay. And go to my sketch. Get, go to my sketch. We can just draw them because most of my images, my images all comes in like in my imagination. It comes off in the form of an image. So once it just flashes, I just have to make sure I draw them because I'll forget. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So do you have like a pocket notebook that you like? If you're like on, if you're out and about, do you have like a notebook in your pocket, or do you have like a big like drawing book? No. When, when I'm in town, it's my phone. So okay. once the idea flashes, I just have to type it down. So once I get to my room, I have to draw it. Otherwise, it just goes. But if I don't type it and I just move on, I, I forget the whole idea. Yeah. Nice, nice. You know, we uh, interviewed an artist uh, who uh, makes masks out of shoes. So he takes tennis shoes, he cuts them up in pieces, and he creates gas masks out of them and he said when he first started he did a, a thing called mask 365 where he drew or created a mask a day for 365 days and so i was like oh right on and then so i went to go and look up this project of like this is a creative uh, exercise and i really like that and like you know i think even though i don't think i don't call myself an artist um i really like to draw and doodle and and do, and do things. So I've been making masks since that interview. Let me see. I think I got the notebook here. Give me one second. Uh, 
So I was going to, I told him I was going to do it for at least half a year. You know, I was going to do, make it mask for half a year. So what I've been doing, uh, I took this, this book that I, this little journal book and I've been drawing masks every day, like different kinds of masks, like, I mean, just kind of simple. And then sometimes they get a little bit more intricate things I've seen from other masks. Like, <laughs> it's like just, so I would love to, you know, I would love to, I mean, I don't even know what the, a lot of these are like pretty wild. Like right? I'm just like creating stuff that somebody has, uh, has created. Maybe I would like to maybe at some point invite you to like, if, a, if an idea of a, of a image of a mask comes to you, I know there's one image on your, on your Instagram page that I really love with, I think it's two men, like, I don't know if they're, they're battling or if they're having a, I don't know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's a beautiful image. Um, but if you think of one, like to to create an image that that we can, you know, help, you know, promote in our work around these masks, right? Like, what, what would it be like if we didn't have to feel held back by these things? Right? And I think you're, what you said about your mom is so beautiful. Like she encouraged you to go after your your goals and dreams, you know, and not hold yourself yeah. back. And maybe some of your friends feel like they constantly have to be wearing masks all the time, right? In yeah. order to keep their parents happy, they have to wear a mask to like, oh, I love this profession, <laughs> even though yeah. probably deep down they they don't, right? And yeah. uh, that would that would be so amazing. So I created an image of the max of me being funny inside. I don't know if I could share it. I could just share, show it to you here. Is it possible? Okay. I may be. Um, I- let me see. Let, let's let's try it. Let, I mean, let, let me see. Let me make sure I turn it on. I think you should be able to share. Allow participants to share. Uh, let me make sure. I'll just make you a a co-host, and then you can share. We've never done this before, so it's actually we're gonna try something brand new, and we'll see how it how it turns out. Can you see it? Uh, not yet. So maybe you have to like. Uh, okay, I'm coming. Okay. Oh, there it is. It's coming. Can you see it? Uh, I, I'm. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's a funny person inside, but appears like a serious person. Uh, <laughs> nice. I see it. I see it. Oh, wow. That's. Is there an is there an image is there an image before this one, or is this is kind of like the face of the first? Oh, I see, I see. The serious person so is. You, oh, see, there's a person inside smiling. Yeah, yeah. that's great. <laughs> oh my gosh! Thank you for sharing this. What, what what I'll have Ryan to do is maybe you can. Have you posted this one yet? No, no. Okay, maybe I can have Ryan to. Um, you can either send us the image or w- are you planning to post this one or is this a new image for you? Oh, it's a new image for me. So I'll be posting it. Okay. You'll be posting it soon. Okay. So yeah. man, let let us know when you do that so that we can uh, make sure that we share it with folks. Okay. okay no problem. Right on. Let me see if I can grab it. Okay. Thank you for sharing. That's beautiful. That's exactly what we're talking about. Like your art is taking amazing photography and creating these images yeah have you i can't wait to some i can't wait to some of your friends who actually uh who you who you spoke about i can't wait till they see it and i love to hear what they say about it okay so can i stop sharing now yeah 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 no uh, thank you thank you for sharing it all right all right on see we had our first uh screen share on this podcast that's power. So for those that um, were on listening and you weren't able to see it, I probably should have described it. There's an image um, of a man uh, facing to the left. Uh, and when you look at the, the top part of the face, you can just see, well, maybe, well, I'll describe it what I saw and then you can tell what you kind of, maybe you thought. Um, it seems like the top part of the face is very like serious, just like maybe eyes closed, just kind of looking. And then when you see like a, image of what's underneath you see a smiling face and it's beautiful right on how how long how long does that take you how long does the from the idea to your sketchbook to creating 
to finding the the um do you have like um friends that you photo- that you photograph or do you have to like yeah yeah more, more my pictures are my friends i don't i don't choose professional models i think it's very easy to work with people who understand you because they are they are willing to do anything for you so most of my all my pictures are my friends yeah nice. and it's very it's very fast when i'm working once i get the idea i just have to plan a day so once we take the pictures, I come in my room. I have, I already have whatever I'm going to do in my mind. So when I start, within 10 minutes, I'm done. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's a man right on. Oh, the, the creative, the creative juices have already been flowing ahead of time. And then when you get into the zone, you're in the zone. Yeah. Right on. Well, you know, is there any, I think maybe, you know, this is, how the activity goes there. There's not, it's not really me trying to interview you. It's really me getting to know you. I think the work with the mask is, you know, two people, two men coming together, really recognizing that we're human, that, you know, we have similarities that I didn't, wouldn't have known just by seeing your posts. Right. I wouldn't have known that we had anything, those kind of things in common. So I really want to thank you for being on the show today. Um, is there anything that you, um, as you think about the young people in your community or in, in the world, like, is there anything that you want to say about people for people who may say it's really hard to make these masks. It's really hard to write these words. Is it, since you've done it, is there anything you want to say to them about encouraging people to like take off those masks? Yeah, I think you should, you should just embrace like what is inside you. And you should be willing to take it off because I think what's inside us is actually who we are. And hiding it actually gives you so much unhappiness and like depression. It's better you just let everything out. So it's, it's so great to like express yourself and allow everything that's inside you to be out there. And yeah. Awesome. Thank you. How can people find you? How can they follow you? What are the ways that you want people to engage with you? If you can tell us that, then we'll make sure we'll also write it in the show notes. Uh, but we want you to be able to tell people what are the best ways for them to follow and see your work. Okay. Um, I'm on Instagram. It's um, Frizzle made it. So I'm just a DM away. If you DM me, I'm going to reply. you. I think people feel like I, can, I don't reply messages, but I always reply messages. So. I'm just a DM away, so just reply me. Awesome. He's going to reply. Yeah, we will put the link in the show notes, and um, we'll we'll start. We'll be sharing this once the once it becomes live. And I'm super thankful for you. Uh, thank thank you for being a part of this this journey with us. You know, is yeah. I think that what we're trying to do is to let people realize that that they're not alone, right? Whether you, you're an artist, whether you're a teacher, a lawyer, doctor, whatever, that we're human. And if we can get beyond that part of just saying, man, you know, here's, here's the things I gladly show the world and here are the things that I don't talk about. Um, so if any of you out there want to create your mask, you can go to 100kmasks.com and make your mask anonymously. And if you want to yeah, be. And, and I think taking off the mask, like, it was very helpful because it allows you to embrace yourself and to be like, okay, this is who I am. There's no need to be sad about it. Yeah. I mean, I think that I'm still learning too, right? I'm as, as a person who has made my mask hundreds of times, I'm still working on that part of me. Like what are the, what, what are the other things am I not showing, you know? And so okay. I really thank you for being with us today and, and stay in touch. You know, I'm looking forward to yeah. staying in touch and I look forward to you posting that piece. I'm going to be like, I saw it first. I saw yeah. it first. <laughs> If what you heard today you enjoyed, if you've listened to this and you found something inspiring, please like and subscribe to this podcast. That's the best way for someone to uh, find this podcast, maybe like you did. Uh, please tell someone about it. If you know, listen to some of our previous episodes, and if one of them rings out to you, please share it with somebody you know. 
Uh, we also invite people to join us in a face-to-face -face where they come together with another person to make a mask and talk about that mask together. There's short conversations, about 20, 30 minutes. So if that's something that's interesting to you, please uh, send us a message, send us a, in the comments below, let us know that you're interested in that. And we look forward to you joining the movement of the Million Mask Movement. And check out our new shirt. I don't know if you, how you can, if you can see it, but this is our new shirt, the Million Mask Movement. And so uh, we'll have these soon available, uh, but we look forward to you being a part of the movement and supporting our work. Uh, please consider supporting the work that we do in Ever Forward and in the work uh, that we do in the Million Mask Movement to let people around the world realize that they're not alone. Thank you.